Hello, my name is Jemin Shin. I'm from KAIST, and I'm here to present our paper, Fat Balancer, Data and Pace Control for Efficient Federated Learning on Heterogeneous Clients. Uh, this work was, in, was done in collaboration with three great professors, Yeon Chun, Yun Shin, and my super advisor, SJ. So let's get started. Federated learning is a new machine learning paradigm that performs decentralized training on mobile devices with its local data. And federated learning trains on a large corpus of private user data without collecting them. So it, en it enables many new applications, and it is gaining lots of interest from both academia and industry. So for example, uh, there are Google, Apple, and Taobao. The big tech companies are actually deploying federated learning in their products. And also there are many researchers who are proposing amazing new applications such as tumor detection, asthma detection, and even some clinical support for COVID-19. However, the federated learning requires the client devices to actually perform own device training of large neural networks on mobile devices, and this incurs significant client overhead. For this reason, uh, many recent uh, federated learning researches has primary objective of achieving high time to accuracy performance, which means to achieve the target accuracy in less time. This better time to accuracy is more desired when you have to run multiple federated learning. So if you are a model developer and if you want to prototype a new model with federated learning without a proxy data set, you want to test like multiple hyperparameters or multiple model archi architectures, and you want to also reduce the user cost, then you need better time to accuracy. Also, if you are a service provider who are performing frequent model update with continual learning and federated learning, you need better time to accuracy. So for this reason, the primary research question here is how to achieve better time to accuracy in federated learning. So before we go into the more details, let me share you some background of what happens in a training round of federated learning. So here we have a client selected for a training round. So what, what, what happens first is that the client downloads the model from the server, and with that model, the client per performs E local epochs of training with its local data, where the E is the predefined constant. And uh, with the updated model, this, the client uploads the updated model to the server, and this all needs to be done before the deadline, which is a timeout that requires the cli client to finish the task. So, the challenge in achieving better time to accuracy, and uh, one of the main of them, is the client heterogeneity, and there are two types of them. The first one is the hardware heterogeneity. So if you think about many different uh, local, uh, local client devices that we use, like there are some high-end devices and there are some low-end devices, and the difference between them is that, that low-end devices are significantly slower and often fails to send model updates before the deadline. Also, uh, in terms of the data heterogeneity, which is another type of heterogeneity, uh, the client tra train data are often imbalanced and non-IID, uh, and this leads to each client contributing very differently to the uh, learning process. So even if there's like more client successfully training a model before the deadline, uh, if there's a lot, lot, lots of duplicate data between the client, the client data, uh, there could be a slow training again. So there have been some previous approaches that attempted to optimize this time to accuracy performance. The first one is PROX. What PROX does is for a low end device that uh, cannot meet the deadline requirement to perform all the client tasks, the PROX uh, allows those low end devices to perform less number of epochs to meet the deadline requirement. For other approaches such as HeteroFL or Fjord, they are very different approaches, but their basic idea is that to allow the low end devices to perform soft model training to meet the deadline requirement. And also there was ORT, which proposes a client selection strategy that both considers the hardware speed and the data contribution of each client. And we observed that uh, while these are the great previous approaches to optimize the time to accuracy, none of these approaches attempted to involve sample selection. So our paper's main focus is about applying sample selection for efficient federated learning while the conventional federated learning approaches treats all client data equally. From our pre pre preliminary studies, we found that the treating all client data, could lead e uh, client data equally could lead to slower federated learning. So in this experiment, what we did is we, we measured the contribution of each samples during the federated learning process of each round, 
and we found out that the ratio of, of important samples at the early stage was 90%, but decreased significantly to 20% at the later stage of federated learning. This implies that equally training federated learning data could lead to waste of computational resources for training unimportant samples. So we need better sample selection strategy for federated learning, but what if we could just apply previous approaches in centralized learning? Unfortunately, that's not the case. So for example, there's important sampling approaches, but applying them directly is infeasible because it requires private user data sharing between clients, which breaks the privacy guarantee of federated learning. So our real research question here is, how could we achieve efficient federated learning with sample selection? And as an answer to that question, we propose FAT Balancer, a systematic federated learning framework with sample selection for optimized training process. So here's an overview of FAT Balancer at each round of federated learning. So we have server and uh, like one of the clients, one of the millions of clients. So what server first do is uh, they send to a client a three information, the model, the deadline for this round, and the loss threshold for this, this round. And this loss threshold is a variable of fat balancer that allows the client to select uh, effective data for this round of training. And with the selected data, the client performs the local model training with the, with the given model. And this process outputs the model update. And client, after all this task, uh, uploads the model update and the metadata to the server. And with this given information, the server outputs the new model. And at the same time, the server with the metadata uh, outputs the new loss threshold and the new deadline for the next round. So that's what happens for the fat balancer. And let me explain each component in more detail. So when we first attempted to design fat balancer, the first question that we had is, how should we select the subset of samples? And maybe the simplest idea would be, we could just simply reduce the training data with random, random sampling. But this simple reduction of train, uh, training data amount could result in lower model accuracy because that's just like simply reducing the uh, data contribution. So we designed Fat Balancer to prioritize more informative samples to, e to efficiently utilize clients' computational effort. So, we, uh, to achieve such a goal, we measured the, st the statistical utility to measure the importance of a sample. And here we used a sample's loss as a statistical utility. So we are using this statistical utility, and here are two questions that we, sh that we should address. First one is, calculating the statistical utility at every round of federated learning requires forward pass on all the data of the client, and that would require additional latency overhead. How, how do we deal with it? And also, the second question is, how does Fat Balancer determine which samples to select out of all this measurement? So let's focus on the first question. So what we did is we actually pipelined the utility measurement for less latency overhead. So let's say here is a client who is first selected for a, for a training round. What we do is we, we perform forward pass, and here we have the statistical utility measurement for every samples of that client, and we perform sample selection with that measurement. So let's say we have, uh, for example, have these six samples selected. And with these selected samples, what we do is we train with those samples. And as you, as you will all know, uh, when we train with these selected samples, the loss of these samples are naturally acquired. So we could update the statistical utility measurement here. And after that, if a client is actually selected for another round, the second round, we could use the existing samples uh, utility measurement uh, information to perform another sample selection without forward, path, forward pass, which could op also update the utility measurement again with after the training process. And that happens at, for every consecutive round. And this is how the FAT balancer deals with this latency overhead. So uh, back to the second question, how does FAT balancer determine which samples to select? So the answer is we used the loss threshold, which appeared before, uh, to determine high utility samples. So in this figure, we have the loss threshold hold of 0.7 as an example. And the sample, samples with utili utility values bigger than 0.7 are considered as high utility, high, high utility samples. So how does FAT balancer determine the opt optimal loss threshold for each round of federated learning? 
So first thing we, we would like to mention is that we used the global loss threshold, not the local loss threshold determined on each client. The reason is because determining a loss threshold within each client could result in non-optimal sample selection because the all client data are very heterogeneous. Uh, some, on, on some client, actually important samples could be determined as non-important samples and vice versa. So because of this problem, Fat Balancer uses global loss threshold for all clients due to the data heterogeneity. So, how do we determine this global loss threshold? Maybe the simple idea would be we could just share all this, all the, this utility measurement uh, to the server from clients, and server could, could get some distribution of these utility measurement and find some optimal, uh, optimal threshold. However, sharing this sample level information could also break the privacy guarantee of federated learning, so we thought this, is, this could not be a case for fat, fat balancer. This could not be a good solution for the fat balancer. So what we actually proposed is to apply differential privacy, which, could, which, which is enabled by the client-server coordination that shares differentially private statistics of client utility measurement to determine a loss threshold. And here we, uh, as a differentially private statistics, we, sh we used mean loss and max loss. So with this mean loss and max loss, what the server does is on the loss threshold selection module of server, uh, the server calculates the global mean loss and global max loss of all the clients and try to uh, determine a threshold be between those two values. But thinking of the pre preliminary study that, we, that, we, that, we, that we've seen that the important ratio of, of important samples gradually decrease from the early to the later stage of federated learning, based on such motivation, we, we designed Fat Balancer to gradually increase the loss threshold to remove already learned samples. So, the client right now has the loss threshold. How does client perform sample selection with the loss threshold? So we have this sorted loss list of client samples. So the left is low loss and the right is the high loss. And we have the loss threshold. With this loss threshold, uh, the client data is divided into under threshold and over threshold group. And from each group, uh, the from each group, the selected samples are determined by sampling from each, each of those groups with a length of L. And here the L is the length of samples determined based on the hardware speed of, of, of a client. And P, which determines how, how much we're going to sample from each group, is also another fat, fat balancer parameter. And please refer to our paper for, for more details about this. So we have our sample section right now. Is, is it enough to accelerate federated learning? The answer is no. So Think about a case when we are using a fixed deadline, which is most, mostly a case for conventional federated learning approaches. And here we have client A, B, and C with different round completion time. So when there's no sample selection here, when, and there's a fixed deadline, and client C, which is now currently disconnected from the network, is taking infinite time for the round completion. So in this case, client A and B get to successfully update the model. Uh, update the model. But with the sample selection, the client A and B's latency uh, be decreased significantly, but with the fixed deadline, because client C is taking forever, client A and B need to wait for client C until the fixed deadline. So in this case, actually, with the sample selection, the, the speed up is actually not being achieved. Such straggler clients, like client C, always happen, so, and this leads to less speed up. So what we are looking at is to provides an adaptive deadline based on the sample selection status and the selected clients. So what Fat Balancer does is to predict the optimal deadline for each round with varying client data. So how does Fat Balancer predict optimal deadline? Uh, we, to achieve such a goal, we proposed a metric called deadline efficiency that formulates the benefit of selecting such, such deadlines. So uh, it is determined as the number of completed clients before T over T, where, where T is the candidate deadline. And from our preliminary study, we found that there always exists a certain, can, certain deadline that achieves the peak DDLE value. And based on that, Fat Balancer selects the deadline by finding the best DDLE values from selected clients and samples. So please refer to more details about this deadline uh, prediction. So how did we evaluate a Fat Balancer? We used a framework called Flash, which is a heterogeneity-aware benchmarking framework for federated learning. 
And also as a baseline, we use the combination of the following methods, which are aggregation methods, deadline configuration methods, and the, and the sample selection methods. And also as a data set, we used five real world user data sets from three different domains uh, that spans computer vision, NLP, and human activity recognition. So here are many, many results from our experiments. But as a summary, Fat Balancer consistently shows high performance over baseline methods on all data sets, while the baseline methods showed in, in, inconsistent performance over different domains of data sets. So for example, the Fat averaging plus one T here showed their best performance on CV tasks, but showed extremely low performance on NLP tasks. Also, Fat Balancer achieved time to accuracy performance improvement without sacrificing the accuracy. Actually, Fat Balancer showed improved model accuracy on all data sets. That, in summary, Fat Balancer achieved up to 4.48 times speed up and 5% accuracy improvement. Also, we proposed some collaboration with federated learning algorithms because Fat Balancer is kind of readily applicable to orthogonal approaches. So this is one of the examples. We applied Fat Balancer on ORT and achieved up to 1.84 times speed up and 2.6% accuracy improvement. Lastly, we also uh, tested our system not only on the simulation ex experiment, but we also evaluated on the testbed experiments with Android clients, where we included 21 Android clients with 13 different models, and it was placed on the indoor environment with federated learning while the clients were connected to the campus Wi-Fi. So what we have observed from this testbed experiment is that the communication latency of each training round showed very high variability uh, compared to the training latency. So you, you can see in this graph that the train latency of each round stays quite constant, but the network latency shows high variability, which was about 1.5 times larger variance compared to the simulation experiment that we configured. However, in this extreme environment, Fat Balancer still achieves superior performance in terms of speed up and accuracy. And we, we, we examined that baseline methods were affected by the prolonged communication with high variability, while Fat Balancer were able to achieve better performance with its adaptive deadline configuration with DDLE. So here are our contributions. We proposed a systematic framework for federated learning with sample selection which actively selects high utility samples without breaking privacy. Also, we propose the deadline control strategy for each round of federated learning based on the newly defined metric. And we implemented and evaluated Fat Balancer on five real world data sets showing up to 4.48 times speed up and 5% accuracy improvement. We also uh, open sourced our code and we also went through the artifact evaluation and that wraps up our presentation. I would like to thank my co-authors for their huge support for their journey, uh, in our journey, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. <laughs>